Yeah. All right, let's get going. Let's go. Are we ready? DMT Quiet and AI. On set. We are? DMT and AI. Quiet. DMT and AI. Are you recording? Yes. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 oh. Testing, 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 testing. One, two, 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 one, I hope everyone out there is well in Peopleville and your loved ones are healthy, your pets are healthy, your grandma's healthy, even though she's watching Fox News all day, she's going to vote for Trump. I don't know how many, I have so many uh, friends who are Latino and Ecuadorian and shit, my brothers and sister half Ecuadorian for real and uh well my half brothers and half sister but um and they don't fall under this category but uh there's 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 a a, a kind of a, a big contingency of, of of older Latino folks that that are into Trump like no you don't know he he, he keep the illegals out like, he, Mr. Trump do good he write the book about being rich that's pretty crazy but uh yeah, and we're back, back in the studio. So many good sunsets the past couple nights here in Los Angeles, California. Really, really dynamic. Uh, I filmed one yesterday that will include in one of the songs, but I, I filmed it for a few minutes, so it should fill the... The time for a song, you know. You guys, um, I'm not talking, sorry, I'm not addressing the audience, but you, you guys, you all look really, really great tonight in the, in the audience. I mean, Steve, especially you, like, uh, that haircut, pff, you look spiffy. You, have you guys heard of this guy, Elon, Elon Musk? Is that how you say his name? E Elon? So. Not Elon? It's Elon? I gotta say, I've been reading about this guy. I don't know. I think he might be a like a douche. I th I don't know. I I don't know what the, all the hubbub's about. I think he's kind of a douche. He seems like super autistic. Yeah. Some fucked up shit to Bolivia. On his biopic with him. He had sex with crimes. Azealia Banks said some crazy shit about him. Well, well, she's the most believable source in <laughs> the industry, if you ask I me. I want to believe everything she said. Right. She said some insane psychotic shit about him and the relationship and like the swinging. Yeah, but I'm saying, I mean, I, I you know, I went to, I, I stayed in, in South Africa for three months and 
the stereotype is true. Like, white South Africans are, a lot of them are really, really fucked, damaged people. They're really, they just, they're just the kind of people who don't, I don't know, they don't know how to act. But then at the same time, I suppose because I was hanging out with the skaters and the cool kids, you know, I was only 26 at the time. Uh, I met white South Africans that were, like, actually cool people. So, yeah, I don't know if that's something to do with it, but... Yeah, I don't know about that guy. <laughs> he seems like a douche. <laughs> the scary guy? Yeah. Hmm. Let's not let's not talk about negative stuff. Built like a Lego person. <laughs> really? Like, same proportion. Wait, you've seen pictures of this guy? There's pictures of him? <laughs> of this, you, this Elon guy? It's Elon Musk? So square, you know? Well, maybe he's upset with his body. He's got body dysmorphia issues. I like Alon Levet. Yeah. Not to be confused with Alon Levitt, my good friend that we just made a book with. Um, that's coming out very soon. What's the name of Alon? I forget. No, it's the New York 2000 through 2005 Alon Levitt. Great photographer we, we made a book with that's coming out very soon. I got to tell you, you know, I don't spend my time, believe it or not, I don't spend my time listening to the episodes, but I have to listen to just get a take on what the sound's like and, you know, keeping track of all my snooting, um, my burpings and whatnot and saying, but Amanda and all that stuff. Uh, but imagine you really dislike me, like me as a person. This would probably be a hard show to listen to. If you didn't like me, it'd probably be pretty difficult. So so for the people who don't like me, I suggest you do other things with your time. Because I would not want to listen to this if I didn't like me. I mean, I barely like myself. And I'm, here I am. But And that jingling, jangling thing, you wonder what the fuck. Like, is he wearing, like, <laughs> bracelets with bells on them? It's my keys. My keys are around my neck, uh, so I always wear my keys around my neck, the keys to where I live, not the keys to my car, I do not drive. But uh, I wear the keys around my neck because if you, you know, living in New York for as long as I lived in New York, if you lock, if you lock yourself out of your apartment in New York, you're fucked. Like, I don't know how many times I've climbed fire escapes to get to my apartment, in New York. like, you know, hopefully the window's open, but yeah, those are my keys around my neck. Enough of me talking. Let's get back to the let's get back to the beautiful humanity of sound coming out of people's mouths in your ear. I said that really gross. I apologize. <laughs>
time has come. We gotta expand. Call operation. Distribution. New York. Chicago. LA. We gotta set our own mark and enforce it. Champagne wishes of caviar dreams A team that's getting cream With shells of fish gels from triple beams I gleam Living a life for rally Packing 50 galleys Rocking lizard valleys While we do a drug deal in a dark alley Up in casinos Just me and my Dino Pima Pushing Bimos Then Pauly and Reno With two fly Latinos Nas, he runs the whole staff We count math for steam bass We've seen half a Millie Jackson out there on the Queen's half Three major players Getting papers by the layers And those that betray us On the block They rock like Don Mateus Fakers get used to shoot the targets Soon as the darkest Front on the drug market Body see rolled up in the carpet Those are cheaters trying to beat us We got hookers with heaters That'll straight poppin' Put more shows in your top than Adidas The leaders looking straight to me And our Georgie over Monty's You wanna harm me And now you got to come get through a whole army The Cielo rollers, money folders Sippin' bowler, holin' that payola Slingin' the coke without the cola Me and Black don't fake jacks But we might sling one It ain't no shame in our game We do our thing, son Living the fast life with fast cars Everywhere we go, people know who we are A team from out of Queens with the American dream So we're plotting up a scheme to get the seven figure green Living a fast life with fast cars Everywhere we go, people know who we are A team from out of Queens with the American dream So we're plotting up a scheme to get the seven figure green Yo, I got guns from Italy, smoke trees considerably Mid-state and green, it seems as well All my niggas be the ghetto misery Shootouts in liquor stores A perpendicular angle of the clout war Police searching up my Lexo, but who's petrol? My tech blow straight off the roof to test your respect over door don't respect me, it got me handcuffed to rough life I just be up nights, breathing with scuff nights Pour my beers, pour my peoples under the stairs These years I got they names in my swears Private crystal like it's my first child Licking shots, holiday style Rock and steel sweaters while I be down 24 carats, counting cabbage like the Arabs The marriage of me and the mic is just like magic Elegant performance, bubble X full insurance Guzzling Guinness, shooting, catching cases concurrent It's Nas, 700 wise, King Solomon size We on the rise, me and G, ghetto wise guys The Luciano, Frankie Yeo, Bugsy Siegel Green papers with eagles from a trade that's illegal Brother, you got to make it happen This morning, yeah. Brother, you've got to make it happen. When you're living in the fast life. Styles exquisite, yeah, yo, like a blizzard. It's quiet, tire standing on ground with one pivot. Two players rocking silk, blazers of diamonds like glaciers. Lands with name brand seats reclining like a spacious. Bodies on ice, living tripe, rolling fixed up dice. Gambling grand, handling stamps, moves and shites. My bank rolls, got the cops coming in plain clothes. Trying to arrain a game because of a fame that's not a game ghost. True. Right out the slammer with the fame of glamour. Cooking up grams with armor, hammer, supplying scramblers in Alabama. Rub out faces and leave no traces. My aces got mad body cases, preserved. Spaces at the horse races, serving us gone, Viva Clico. Dimes look magnifico, putting it cut in Saparico. Heat for foes, shopping sprees with my fleet for clothes and Caribbean sweets, deep ripping beats with flow. Hey yo, we went from standing on blocks, went out to stock, selling rocks to picking up stock and poke docks with glocks. It got poppy seed fills with million dollar deals, packing on the blue steel. We keep surreal inside the battlefield. Yeah, so here's a toast to the funds and things. Gun smokes and rings, graveyards is buried with kings. King, 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 king. So that was some interesting, fun music, wasn't it? That was, uh, the first song was from the first Alien Workshop video called Memory Screen. That's Scott Conklin's part. And then we played uh, just Biggie's part of, uh, of uh, 
Bone and Biggie, Notorious Thugs, and then I played Massive Attack with Heat Miser, and that led into Fast Life with Cool G Rap and Nas. When I was in high school, I went to high school until I was about 17 years old, and uh, I had a friend in high school, and uh, I suppose I shouldn't say his, his real name, so let's just say his name was Juan, and uh, he was cool. I don't, I don't know what he was a mix of, of Colombian and Mexican, but... Uh, he was so cool. He was such a funny dude. He was short, but he was like super cool looking. Like he's a handsome guy, and uh, and uh, he. Uh, um, are you guys okay? And um, so so Juan, he just was so funny, and he would he would take acid and just show up at my house. Like, what are you doing? Like, what? Let's go do something. I said, yeah, fuck it, like, whatever. And then he wouldn't tell me he was on acid until, like, an hour into hanging out with him. And at the time, I'm about only 17. It was, you know, I don't have that uh, lucrative uh, 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 recognition of, of, of human behavior that I have now. But uh, so he's telling me this story where and he, lived with his, he, lived, he lived with his grandma and... Uh, <laughs> He had taken these mushrooms and put them in orange juice, and then he put that in the blender and made this drink concoction of, of, of orange juice and mushrooms. And he put it back in the fridge in a container, and uh, he was saving it for a later date, you know, to trip out. And he said to me, he said, Dill, fuck. Oh, my God, dude, I'm going to go to hell. This is so fucked up. And I was, he was really tripping. And I was, it's, this is in the morning at, uh, uh, at, at school. Before, as we were walking to the school, he was telling me this story. I said, dude, what's wrong? And he was really freaked out. Like, I fucking fucked up, dude. Oh, my God. And so he said that he came home from school the day before. And his grandmother was washing the radio in the sink with soap and everything. Because she, she drank the orange juice. Oh, no. And so, so his abuela was fucking tripping, tripping balls. And he had to, like, walk her through tripping out and had to, like, calm her down. But he couldn't admit to, because he grew up in... A pretty conservative household but he was a total tripper and uh yeah he came home and his grandma was washing the radio because <laughs> she was tripping on mushrooms Mijo, the radio <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> they don't play no dirty music no more <laughs> but yeah man he was really funny I, I i i don't know anyone from high school at all but i would love to know what he's up to he was so funny he didn't skate or nothing he was just a just a uh, friend that I came across but yeah just a good just a speaking of not skateboarding uh, if you do like this show and I don't mean to sound so insecure all the time but it's just me on the microphone filling dead air and I have the help of Kyle and Mr. Caswell here the producer but I'll say this I'm so loud right now. Why are you typing in all cabs? Stop it. I would, if you, if you, not, you know, your casual listener, if you like this show, will you tell your girlfriends about this show and, like, women? Because I think women would, like, this is obviously not a skateboard show. It's just entertainment. I feel like women would like this show. So if you could, take your time. And tell your non-skateboard women friends and tell your non-skateboard guy friends or whatever. Just tell them, like, this is a funny show. Like, you should listen to it. And they play crazy music and 
this fucking dude's off his rocker. And he's always talking about crazy shit. And, Those bits. You know. Um, but yeah, I, I do. I think the fucking... Well, cause, you know, not to brag, but I've had a lot of success talking to ladies and making them happy. So, you know. But, uh... Yeah. Please. Again, I mean, it sounds insecure. Please, please tell your lady friends. I shove them. They'll like it, I promise. I was a... And again, if you don't listen to this show very often, what I do in my life now that I'm an older person, older than I was, obviously, that's a pretty redundant statement, but I paint, and I paint at my friend Sage Vaughn's studio that he's had in... Pasadena, California for 15 years now and um, I really enjoy painting and uh, that's what I do and I, I hope to have painting be my second career uh, but uh, so Sage went out of town he went to visit his father in New Mexico which left me alone at the studio for three days, you know, king of the castle, got the place to myself, and uh, I went to the grocery store down the street, and I came, there, I did that thing, gave him my throat, then we had to clear, I need, I, if I can control that, I could be a really funny ventriloquist comedian, comedian. but, uh, <clears throat> so I went to the grocery store, and I was walking back to the studio, and there's a gate, so I unlocked the gate, and then there's the front door of the studio, and when I was putting the key into the front door, a bird flew and slammed into the glass of the door right next to my head. And it fucking scared the pants off of me. Gee, it fucking got, I got, was really startled. It's like, holy shit, son of a bitch, that scared me. Sheesh. But yeah, that got me. Man, I was scared. I was really scared. Well, I'm not scared still, but it was in the moment. It was a like, wham! Don't and then he flew off, like, oh God. He's fine. He just, yeah, he, okay. I think he was. He flew off to <laughs> hang out with the other birds and tell them, like, I just fucking slammed right dag heaven into this window. And I think I really scared this weird white dude. <laughs> trying to open the door but yeah at the studio we have you know a big bag of bird feed from like true value or whatever and we feed the the birds that come in the little gated area and uh, there's so many birds in that section i think it's because it's right by the arroyo it's near the big wooded area uh, but yeah huh and then he flew into the window. He flew into the window and he died. Goddamn building. Fucking capitalism again. <laughs> Taking the owls over the You need to do something about this. We need to rise up. We need to do it. We need to protest Wall Street. Big owl. I'm, I'm liquidating all my crypto. <laughs> when I was 15 years old, I was a sponsored skateboarder. And I was getting a little bit of money, and that's how my mom kind of... My mom was always supportive. My mom drove me to skate contests in San Diego and uh, up north. And, and uh, at a young age, she allowed me to fly with people who are men to skate contests in Texas and Nebraska and all this stuff. When I was only 14, 15, she was worried about me skating with, like, older dudes and stuff. And, you know, my mom was just always super paranoid um, about that kind of stuff, which I, I totally understand. When I was 15, I just decided that I didn't mean to put my mom through this stuff. But when I was 15, I decided I'm going to be pro. There's no fucking way I'm not and I'm not just going to be pro I'm going to fully do this thing and I, this is going to be my life and I 
I'm going to make a whole career out of professional skateboarding. And there was a trip where these guys that were, they were driving up to SF and, you know, going to SF, I could shoot with Gabe Mordford or Tobin Yelland and Mark Gonzalez spent lots of time up there. So I knew SF was really going on. This is 1992 and I'm in high school. I'm a freshman and my poor mother, after my dad went to jail, which I'll tell that story some other time, but my dad was a, a, a ridiculous con artist and like was a very smart person, but he just didn't know how to interact with people. I remember we would go to 7-Elevens and, and this is before Starbucks and coffee shops, but we'd go to like 7-Elevens and to get free coffee. He'd always try to get free coffee from people. So he'd call everybody Guy. Like everybody was named Guy. And I remember that was a good lesson for me. It's like a five-year-old kid think, thinking like, oh, he's lying. He doesn't know their name. So he calls them Guy. But in, 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 anyway. Uh, uh, so my mom had to get a really gnarly job. And, and you know those those containers on the back of trucks, the big rigs. So those are containers, and she worked at a place called Container Care, and that was in uh, Wilmington, California, which is one of the more beautiful parts of, of Los Angeles. And um, I was being fictitious. It's pretty gnarly over in Wilmington. Um, so my mom had a full job, and so my full-time job became ditching school and and causing problems for my mom, which I, I'm sad about now. But I'm not. I pay, What am I talking about? I'm not sad. I pay for her to live and her husband. Like, the shit really worked out. But uh, they'd be on the streets without me. Uh, so I did this multiple times. So these older dudes were going on a trip to SF, and I said, can I come, please? Can I come to SF? And they said, yeah, fine. And before my mom got home from work, I left her a note saying, don't be mad, I'll be fine, I'm sorry, I'll be home in four days. And I'm 15 years old. And I left her the note, you know, on the in our little apartment just on the table where she walked in. But this, this one time when I was, I'd already written the note, and I already made the plan with the guy. And this is before cell phones, whatnot. So it's like, the plan is, I'm going to hang out at this one skate spot so you guys come pick me up when you're ready. And uh, so I'd already written the note knowing, like, okay, I'm doing it again. She's going to fucking freak out, but I have to do it. I have to go to SF. And I got I to gotta do this. This is my future career. And um, so I wrote the note. And it was probably about 4.30, and she wasn't going to get home till about 6.30, but I just wanted to be out of there completely, like just in case she came home early. And um, I went to go pee in the bathroom, and behind the toilet, I heard this, like, rustling. And I stopped peeing because I got so scared. I didn't know what it was. And I see this weird, gruesome tail coming out from behind the toilet, and I look behind, it's a baby possum in the bathroom. I said, oh my gosh. And this is a, this is a one bedroom apartment. I slept on the couch. Like, so this is just a little bathroom. And so I got scared and, and I didn't know what to do. So I just I opened up the, 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 what's it called? The drawer under the sink, not the drawer, but the cabinet under the bathroom sink. And then I shut the door. And I came back in like 10 minutes later, right from about to leave. And the little possum is in the cabinet. So I shut the doors. And so I made another note. Oh my God. And I put it and I taped it to the cabinet. <laughs> like, like not with the other note? But no, this is cabinet. another note. Oh my God. This is, this is a possum. subsequential note. Watch over the possum. <laughs> oh my God. So... <laughs> The other note doesn't mention there's another note to go look for? Well, she'd see the first note. I mean, this is a very small apartment we okay. had. So she'll see the first note and then the second note. Because my mom would sit on the ground and get ready for work in front of that cabinet. I knew her routine. She'd put a towel down. I still don't know why she did that. She sat on the ground. I don't know. She sat on the ground and 
got ready and she had her mirror and everything that wasn't the mirror above the sink. So, uh, yeah. So I wrote a note. By the way, there's a baby <laughs> possum in this cabinet, so be careful. I'm sorry again. I love you. I'll see you in four days. So my mom told me she came home after work that night, and I was already gone. And she came across the first note, and she was fucking furious. She was angry and worried, obviously. I totally understand, and I've paid my, bo my mom back tenfold. But, anywho, she then went to bed and didn't enter the bathroom. So the next day, she was still so mad at me when she woke up that she went into the bathroom to do her thing, get ready for work, that she thought the second note was just more of my, like, oh, I'm sorry, whatever. She's like, fuck you, like, so mad at me. So she just ripped it off the cabinet. <laughs> my mom said that. She sat on the floor to start getting ready, and she opened the cabinet doors, and the thing was right in front of her fucking Holy face. Shit. And my mom said she screamed so loud they could hear it in Pacoima. Like, she just <laughs> scared her so bad. And she had to, she and it was like seven o'clock in the morning, and she had to call my like it was just me and my mom living there at the time, and and but she had to call my 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 sister's boyfriend at the time to come get the possum. I always felt bad. I'm sorry, mom. But again, I take I've done a good job taking care of her. She knows I love her, so yeah, but yeah. Long story. A baby possum's cute, and the possums in Australia, the, no, the possums in Australia, they look like they're made by Disney, like they're really, they're so fucking they're cute, they're so cute, but, but a male grown possum in North America it's is terrifying. fucking terrifying, it's terrifying. They're, they're, they they're, they scare the fuck out of me, so they're a crucial part of the ecosystem, they well, kill the ticks, well that, that's good to yeah, know, they kill ticks, and they don't get rabies, well that's good to know, yeah. They're rabies free. Rabies free. They're just ugly. <laughs> <laughs> rabies don't want to be with them. They're no, so yeah. ugly. If I found a baby possum in my house, it'd be, it'd be a good day for me. <laughs> if they're from Australia, maybe. But yeah. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> possum in the house. Let's hear some fucking music. <laughs> Sixty 
Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. You can enjoy the uh, ambient uh, ASMR going on in the background. Sunshine, Ray Charles. Sunshine. I've got my friend the darkness here tonight to hide me Sunshine As far as I'm 
Sunshine by Ray Charles. What am I hearing? It sounds like a small stream in the distance. What is it? Take some fridge. Refrigerator Perry? Refrigerator Perry. From the 1983 Chicago Bears. <laughs> Bring him in here. I want to talk to him about the Super Bowl shuffle. <laughs> Do you guys know what the Super Bowl shuffle is? So that I think 1983, someone's riding a motorcycle in a warehouse. Someone's doing a wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> someone's doing a wheelie's age. Oh, did anyone use the bathroom? I think the toilet's broken. It was bubbling. I don't think it's that bad. It sounds it sounds like good ASMR. I don't know. Some fresh water. But anywho, the Super Bowl. Close the door. No, don't. Not yet. Sorry. It's fine. Three men in a room. It's gonna smoke. Yeah. Three men and a baby. <laughs> so anywho, the Super Bowls, this is so dumb. This is such information that people really need to know. But So the Super Bowl shuffle... Fuck it, I'm going to find a little bit of... I'll, I'm going to... We've, 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 gone, we've gone down this rabbit hole. But then Bob Odenkirk, who's great, that guy Bob Odenkirk. I don't even watch the show Better Call Saul, but I like Bob Odenkirk a lot. And he said, one time he said... Rabbits don't dig holes. They don't even use holes. And I thought, oh, that's funny, a rabbit hole. So this was big in, in, in the 80s. So I'm referring to, to Refrigerator uh, Perry. So the, the 1983-84 uh, bears 
got together and they they made this song that I'll give you a little snippet of. And this was 1985. This was fucking huge in my childhood. I was like eight years old. But yeah, here you go. <laughs> we are the best shuffling crew. Shuffling on down. Do it for you. We're so bad. We know we're good. Blowing your mind like we knew we would. You know we're just strutting for fun. Strutting our stuff for everyone. We're not here to start no trouble. We're just here to do the Super Bowl oh, shuffle. Well, they call me sweetness and I like to dance. R so that, that was that. That was the. That was the super, but you don't have to go over that now. We're doing the show. You're, so You're taking me out of the show. I'm sorry. And I appreciate, I appreciate everything you do, and I'm always concerned with how you feel. But yeah, so anyway, that, <laughs> this is the, the dumbest section of the show we've ever done. But <laughs> anywho, that was, that was the Super Bowl shuffle, and it was a really big deal. Uh, for people like when they do and that, I think the song ended up like number one on the billboards and whatnot But yeah, yeah, yeah I like those songs. Refrigerator Perry. He seemed like a good guy that guy Refrigerator Perry he seemed like a good guy But yeah, shit Did you guys know? So there's a There's a, a there's a, a a nice amount of uh, stop laughing so there's a nice amount of, of, of young people who aren't joining the military in America. There's a big drop-off in a recruitment in the Navy, in the Army, in Air Force and all that. But in the next two to three years, and it's already in place now, it's already happening now in wars all over, the, all over the world where it's it's turning out that and the the US military has has implemented over the last few years because the mil, the military in America they 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 really think about the future they really think about the way things are going to go so if you're if you're missing a bunch of big buff guys and tough women to fight the wars, what America is is doing is is America has, and I'm sure other countries is the UK and and France and a bunch of other countries have the same thing going on, that they're recruiting young people that are good at video games, to fly drones and do all this shit, and so the whole the whole combat tactic will not be this hand-to-hand -hand in person stuff. It'll be a dude at a computer in Texas fighting a war overseas. You guys don't find this very interesting. I thought it was very interesting. <laughs> I'm just flying my drone right now. <laughs> but no, it's it's really interesting. Like fucking they're 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 hiring these kids not based on going to boot camp. They're hiring like their, video game people. Off their Twitch channel. Because they can fucking do the thing. They're so uh, good at it, and so that that war will, won't be fought. In the next few years, war won't be fought so much on the ground level. It'll be more people at computers flying these drones. I don't know. I thought it was interesting. It's, I mean, the first time I saw a kid playing Fortnite was like the craziest thing I ever saw. Mm. The, like the how fast they are and their dexterity is insane. And this general, I watched this video. This this guy who's a general talking about it, and he said, "Yeah, I fucking, I used to play. Uh, uh, what's the one that's got what's Call the, the, the yeah? I almost said POD. <laughs> um, Christian Rock. Right, but he said." He said, it got so insane that I can't even play the games with my kids anymore. It gives me, like... PTSD. Yeah, it's too crazy. But he's like, but I get it. This is the future of, of war. But, yeah, I don't want to talk about war, but I just thought that was an interesting aspect of, of, of how... It was that, and then there was this whole thing of, of forever, people talking about uh, uh, overpopulation of the planet. And it turns out that... 
that was incorrect. And now there's a super big depopulation from, from America to Japan to all these places now are having such a lower birth rate. So that's now becoming a more of a non-issue and it's becoming problematic to the way everything finds itself and comes back into what people need. So in the future, it's there might not be enough people to implement X amount of jobs and to create grain and the whole infrastructure and everything. So it's like it went from being... And that's what's kind of beautiful about being alive, where it's like, don't drink coffee, it's bad for you. Actually, drink coffee, it keeps you from having brain cancer. It's, it always goes one way and flips back over and you kind of get to watch this paradigm like going back and forth and shifting but it's interesting did they ban porn in texas did that happen i think so so all of texas yeah I think you can't get any porno i think you have to like show your id <laughs> to the website Who you you sh- to, like, oh yeah i think you have to like take a picture of your id and send it that's insane to me vpns are probably going fucking crazy just right? don't what's a just vpn go outside, <laughs> just go like, outside and meet someone on the block like, if I wanted to watch something from a different territory, mm-hmm. like, I could use my computer to pretend I'm in Switzerland to watch, like, Switzerland TV if I wanted to. So what you mean, music you mean Swiss porn? Ah, uh, <laughs> no. Does this, music videos? does this ad- adhere to anime porn? Avicii. As well? I, I, you know, <laughs> that, the, that seems area. like the gray area of Texan porn. Man, Texas. Fuck. Right. Still got rodeos, though. No porn, no abortions, but we have 50,000 kids in the foster home system. <laughs> sounds um, sounds perfect. Sounds great. There's some beautiful parts of Texas. There really are. Yeah. People don't know. I think the most... I've, I've had this, like being a professional skateboarder and being interviewed. Um, I, one one question I've got a lot from people over the years is, what's your favorite country? What's your favorite place you've ever been? And obviously it's America, USA, USA. Koreatown. <laughs> but uh, New Zealand. New Zealand is the greatest place I've ever been. It's just, it's really incredible. I remember the first time I went to Australia, I was flying into Melbourne, and this is 99 or 2000. It was before big internet stuff, but I thought going to Australia, I thought I was going to Jurassic Park. You know. I thought that the... But I thought, I, but my dumbass, I thought going to Australia, like, oh, it's going to look like Jurassic Park. It's going to look like Hawaii. Like, n- no. <laughs> I flew into Melbourne. And it's like, the place looks like, kind of like SF. Like, it's like a city. It's like a, it's like a small, subdued SF. It looks like the valley. <laughs> no, not the valley. It's a bunch of fucking look, <laughs> look, no offense, but nowhere looks like the valley. I don't care where you go in the world, it doesn't look like the valley. But. Yeah, New Zealand's just incredible. It's so lush and beautiful and just fruit and animals and nature and beaches. And There's a reason they don't let foreigners to New Zealand buy um, property in New Zealand. You can't, if you're an American, you can't buy property out there. So they know. They got the... New Zealand is the place. Like, it's fucking epic. I was in uh, Christchurch and... Um, doing a skate tour in 2010 or 11 and we did a we did a, a demo or some bullshit or skating or whatever and um, went to bed in Christchurch and then at a hotel and then we woke up in the morning and uh, we went to the the airport to fly to Sydney Australia from uh, Christchurch New Zealand and we flew the very short flight from Christchurch to Sydney and we got off the plane and we got in taxis and went to the hotel that we were staying at, the, the Swiss Grand Hotel at Bondi Beach in, in Australia. And uh, as we're checking in, there's TVs in the lobby and they were showing this 
seven point something earthquake that just hit Christchurch. And there were buildings fell down and all this stuff. So we just, just missed a fucking huge earthquake in, in, in Christchurch. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Christchurch is crazy, yeah. Christchurch, Auckland. What's the other big one? Christchurch, Auckland, and... I can't remember. I've been to all of them. I've been all over that place a few times. Brisbane. Brisbane. Maccas. But, yeah, um, yeah, go to Maccas. But, yeah... I mentioned in the last episode that I like to try to play the songs on like an arc, like building up to the middle and then coming down. But I'll tell you what, just like I said in a couple episodes ago, I'm going to contradict myself. and I'm, I'm going to say things that actually don't come into fruition and play a bunch of weird shit. So, yeah. What's the last song I played? Ray Charles Sunshine. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry. That was not a fart by Sage. That's the, my Mr. Caswell just has a squeaky chair. Okay, I know you've heard it. You've all heard this. And if you haven't heard this, I'm jealous of you because it's so fucking good.
wretched lands Cause all this has just got to mean something
barn Du bever mig om Sine swiling clues In a nurse That the sky will split And the planets will shift Bows of jade will drop And existence will stop Joan of Arc in the cars as you looking up at me oh uh -huh, baby I remember when you were born it was dawn in the storm settled in my belly in the road in the grass in the spit at the gas in the lit a match in the void wind flash in the sky split in the planet So, well, go fuck yourself. That's another thing about having kids. I don't mean to be so, uh... What's the word I'm searching for? Aggressive. But if I had a kid, like, say I had a kid, I have a couple, you know, I have a couple abortions under my belt. I'm not proud of it. I believe in abortion. I think it's a okay thing, that, that, what am I talking about, okay thing, um, it's a necessity in the aspect of the, the human, uh, existence, it is, some people aren't, aren't ready, and it, and it, it's, uh, if you're this little, tiny embryo, and you don't know things, and things don't process, and you're 
taken out, you know, it, it's a... Uh, If you're not a woman and you have opinions on abortion, well, you're. An, if your opinions are negative, well, then you're an asshole. You know, it's like, what? What if there was a giant uh, Congress and government of women being like, "Hey, check it out. You got to put this shit up your dick, because we're we're over you. <laughs> like, you fucking, fuck you. All that bullshit. It's ridiculous. And that I. IVF stuff going on. It's all fucking insane. Um, why did I bring that up? I don't know. I suppose because I played a couple women's songs and whatnot. And yeah, I'm pro woman. I'm pro women being comfortable in their own body and their situation and having choices and. Leaving it, leaving it up to them to make their own choices. There's an EPA report, which uh, is the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, which I'm sure there'll be a a, a small facet of people be um, under the inclination of you read that shit. That shit is fucking backed by big pharma. But, I'm sure, whatever, this shit coming out, sorry, I'm looking it up right now. I'm 47 years old, and I'm so glad to have lived my life and seen what I've seen and done what I've done, and it's been great it's I've had a great life and you know of course like I grew up pretty broke and and uh, was moved around 22 times before I was 17 and this and that but whatever it made me me but uh the shit coming out that these people are saying is pretty fucking bonkers it really is It seems as though it seems as though we're we're fucked. <laughs> like we're pretty fucked. Like it 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 turns out that that things are kinda headed in a bad direction as far as the Terra Nova and the Earth and humans and air and water and food supply it seems like it's really diminishing and, and it's going to be a bad situation when it gets too hot and uh, sure you could you could chalk that up to oh that's the government scaring you um that's mind control and whatnot, but I don't know. I kind of tend to believe, like, what these people are saying as far as the... the if, if you look at the... And there's so much on YouTube nowadays where... Just, you know, your average person will make a video about the the polar ice caps. And they'll show you what it was in 1980. And they'll show you what it is now. And then, also, what's happening in the southern and northern uh, uh, ice caps is that there's this huge blossom of flowers that just never happened before. <laughs> that sounds sounds troubling. <laughs> so look, like, look right here. So, and look, I'm not on fucking infowars.com. <laughs> What's the opposite of that? Uh, 
the, the blue states, uh, the blue states are making your kids gay, and they're implementing uh, things to... But no, so UN Weather Agency issues red alert on climate change after record heat ice melt increases in 2023. The UN Weather Agency is sounding a red alert about global warming, citing record smashing increases last year in greenhouse gases, land and water temperatures, and melting of glaciers and sea ice, and is warming that the and is warning that the world's efforts to reverse the trend have been inadequate. Son of a bitch. That sounds... That sounds serious. <laughs> and it's that whole thing of... It's that whole thing of existing. That, especially existing in this time, of course, that's what I'm talking about, but... That's what I'm saying about being my age. I'm I'm really glad I got to do what I did and and be on this earth and exist. Because it is so human to to be facing a a wave of, of extinction. And not in the aspect that that uh that people have, have pondered on uh, for thousands of years, like the world's always ending. This one has, you know, of course, like the world's always, always ending in Mayan prophecy and, and, and whatnot. And um, who knows if that's the Mayans or some dickhead coming in later being like, do you know what the Mayans were actually talking about? They were talking about this. And in 2012, it's all supposed to go down. But no, it's, it's, it's much more interesting to look at it from an aspect of science. I'm just being like, fuck. Like, Europe is unprepared to grapple with the escalating climate extremes risk assessment finds. It's not funny, but it's just like... Does that just mean they don't believe it? Well, that's what I, I, guess that's what I'm, I guess that's what I'm getting at here, people being... There was, a, there was an actual U.S. congressman from fucking Nebraska or some bullshit. And in March of... 2019 or something, he brought in a snowball saying, like, really? It's fucking global warming. Look, it's still snowing in March. Well, dickhead. That's the whole other... It's, it, it, I liken it to a beautiful old building. Detroit, New York, whatever, Europe. Once a few bricks start falling, you don't think... You know, that's the end, because we could put those back up. Like, we could get some stucco and <clears throat> make some some concrete, make this shit better. But once it starts crumbling, like, that's the end. Like, that's it. That's, that's all there is. You can't, you know, you can't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. It's just fucking, <laughs> that's it. But, yeah, fucking hell. Sorry not to bum you all out, but I just am pretty consumed by this stuff, and I, I tend to read about this stuff kind of a lot. And, uh, yeah. All right, I'll tell you another funny story that's that's sad but true and kind of funny. So I used to get the... When I lived in New York especially, um, there's the super infamous newspaper called the New York Post. And... The New York Post parades itself as an actual newspaper when actually it's much akin to the National Enquirer. It's a trash magazine. It's complete bullshit. And it's owned by Rupert Murdoch, who's a horrible person. And um, uh, But the thing is about the New York Post is you could read about local New York stuff and, and, and strange, funny things and... There was a uh, column in the New York Post called Weird But True. And it was kind of a sidebar column. And it would have all these weird stories from around the world. And uh, one of them one time, this is probably in the early 2000s, there was a story where uh, a woman in Berlin 
in a graveyard, drinking with her friends, leaned against, she was squatting, and she was leaning against a tombstone to pee, and the cross fell off the tombstone, hit her on the head, and killed her. So that's an interesting way to go. You're not facing climate change when that happens. You just accidentally reappropriated a fucking grave from the 1800s under your head. But yeah. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. You never know. You never know. You guys get cold? Yeah, I just like, I'm fucking too scared. Has Dill seen your beanie baby? No, I got a beanie baby yesterday at the swap mate that I found out is worth two grand. It's a black two thousand. Yeah, it's called the end. end. That's amazing. It was made to end Beanie Babies, and then a month later they relaunched it. It's got a dark poem about like good things come to an end. But I was talking about what I was talking about about the EPA and whatnot, and then Mr. Caswell, the producer, <clears throat> brings it to my attention that he went to a, a swap meet in what Pacoima. I like saying Pacoima. I like Saugus, too. Saugus sounds like Mona. Maryland. But, so you found a, a, it's a Beanie Baby bear. Thai Beanie Baby. These things were, were huge at one point. So, all right, now I'm holding this thing. So it's a Thai Beanie Baby. And I have to admit this is pretty cool. It really is. Like, so, <laughs> it's, the of my it's a black, it's an all black beanie baby bear, like a plush uh, velvet black, like some velvet loafers. And on his chest is embroidered in quasi gold hit the end. And it's got like a like a little firework in, in, in like Rasta colors <laughs> next to it. And so it says, this is, so it's on the chest, it says the end embroidered. And this is a very dark themed product. I mean, Thai Beanie Babies was huge. So you're saying that this was re supposed to represent the end of Beanie Babies. Yeah, and then they decided they were. Well, they were making so much money. Why yeah. would they end yeah, it? Yeah, they changed their mind. So it was just a, a it was a, 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 a strategic, uh, a, 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 what strategic? That's another. Yeah. God, we gotta write down all my words strategic. I come up with here. Don't forget to unscribe. 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 But that things were two thousand, according to the internet. Two thousand big ones. So there's 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 a big resale market for them, and there's somebody on eBay selling one for two grand. Wow. And, you know, I didn't find, like, the database. But are people... It's been up there for, for a year. So maybe it's not worth 2000 It might not be worth two grand, but it's currently priced at two grand. I don't know. i, I got to find the actual, like, confirmed sell market for the end Beanie Baby. But apparently this one's got all of the errors that that guy's had. Right, like the tag is a certain way yeah, of, yeah. of the ones that are worth the amount this of money. It matches that exactly. It's like the capital E on the Levi yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. My sister pointed it out. She's like, you fucked up. She's like, you missed that beanie baby. Son of a bitch. Do you know about the Princess Diana beanie baby? No. That's such a dark one. They made it post posthumously. Yeah, yeah. It's purple. It looks My the same. I thought that was the Princess Diana one. So it's that, and does, she have a, does it have a crown? Nah, it's dark. Just, it's no crown? It's, no, nah, it's just a purple beanie baby. Um, powerful object. Just powerful. Powerful object. In the dark. Piece of history. Well, fuck. I was already blown away by Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> just as a whole? Now this. Yeah. Jeez. Beanie baby lore. Wow. How come Supreme never did a beanie baby? They're going to do it now. Jeez. Yeah. Beanie Babies. Son of a Box bitch. Beanie Baby. Right. Well, well, for all you Beanie Baby heads, 
This has probably been quite the shocking amount of information. Jeez. Call in. Right. Call in if you want to make an offer. Right. One day if I'm not completely insecure about doing the show live, we will perhaps do a, a call in. What one? Do it live. You know, you know what's that? That footage of... Um, What's that fucking asshole's name? Um, Bill O'Reilly. Fuck it, we're doing it live! Is that Bill O'Reilly? Yeah. Fuck it, we're doing it live. Fuck it! Man, imagine you had to deal with an asshole like that all the time. That's crazy. Have you ever heard of the Dark Knight guy? The the Batman actor? Oh, when he's talking about the guy that that walked in on the the lighting tech that walked in? Uh, Christian Bale. Not to give him an out or whatever, not at all, but he grew up a rich kid, and his dad, I forget his name, his dad was a filmmaker, so he grew up on sets and whatnot, and, and then Christian Bale starred in Empire of the Sun, which is a, it's a really good, well-made film, uh, when he was like a little, little kid, you know, so he's like this super privileged dude, so like that, if you take that into account, like you're obviously like a really good looking white dude, and you're born into wealth, so obviously he's going to be, the, uh, you know, the, the type of person that, I'm going to lose 90 pounds for a roll and yeah. do all this super extreme shit, which... Patrick Bateman. Good for him. He's truly convicted. Mm. The machinist. Right. Burgoski. Talk about convicted. <laughs> Talking about convicted. Convicted. The guy from Covina is convicted. But no, not Covina. Convicted. I was going to say this after I played Ray Charles, Sunshine, because Jamie Foxx is... Jamie Foxx is a fucking institution. He fucking... The guy rules. Jamie Foxx is fucking incredible. Jamie Foxx does... Imp- Have you ever heard of him do his impression of Trump? No, it's God. fucking incredible. <laughs> and then he goes and does... Uh, the movie Ray, yeah, playing Ray, Ray Charles. Charles. He was Ray Charles for just like a couple of years. Oh my gosh. He was him. And he, there's a YouTube video, I hate saying a YouTube video, but there's a, there's a video where it shows him meeting Ray for the first time. And they're wow. sitting at pianos and Ray didn't know that Jamie already knew how to play piano and whatnot. And it's just fucking incredible. And you see Ray Charles like fall in love with this dude and say, you can do it. You can, you, you baby, you can play me. And... Jamie Foxx just seems like a, he just is, he rules, like he does such a good job and, and I just think he's a great actor. I just hope he's, he's not all cut up in, in this P. Diddy stuff. Like, oh, God. It sounds like this P. Diddy guy is not such a good they were, guy. Yeah, they were boys. They yeah. Were boys. It seems like this P. Diddy, Diddy guy is <laughs> not Fox a... Jamie Foxx likes to party too. <laughs> right. But hopefully he... Like Cuba Gooding Jr. likes to party. Like you know, you know Cuba Gooding Jr. is a bad person. Totally. You just fucking you know it. Vibe. You can yeah. see it. You can you feel it. I love that. I think I showed. You, I think I showed you one time, Kyle, that that clip of uh, so Cuba Gooding Jr. on some like made for TV Lifetime or not Lifetime, but something. He played OJ on the the. They made like a five-part series thing, um, and uh, so he did the show, acted on the show, and then he went and did Steve Harvey's talk show. And so right when he sits down with Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey says, "So you played OJ on thing, and you know like OJ is guilty, and." Cuba Gooden Jr. says, well, there's lots of evidence to point to differ that accusation and, you know, people didn't look into it enough. And Steve Harvey goes, no, 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 I, I know you played the guy, but let me tell you. This is what Steve Harvey says. He says, don't get it twisted. <laughs> OJ Dunn killed all them people in that driveway. OJ killed all them people in that driveway. Wow. It's so funny. It's not funny, but it's wow. funny. And and you see Cuba Gooden Jr. be like, nope, no, I don't know about that. 
But it's so funny that, that fucking Steve Harvey said it the way he said it. It was so funny, man. That was ridiculous. That's straight face, Steve Harvey. But yeah, like, man, I like Jamie Foxx. Don't pull him into the P. Diddy Fox stuff. Likes party. <laughs> but don't pull him. <laughs> don't pull him into the P. Diddy hole. Oh, man. I hope T. Pain's innocent, too. P. Diddy hole. <laughs> I mean, it's all on the internet. You can read the filings. That producer, with his lawyer, put out all those filings. Oh, man. And it looks bad for P. Diddy. And, you know, I mentioned in a, in a, in a, in a show we did recently, like, I don't really want to date these shows. But fuck it. Once again, I'm contradicting myself like I told you I would. But, yeah, P. Diddy's compound near Beverly Hills and his Miami Star Island home got raided today. I've been reading about this P. Diddy guy. It sounds like he's a bad guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And I don't want these black artists to go down. Like, I fucking love Michael Jackson. Like, when I was a kid, fucking Mike was everything. Mike in the Pepsi commercial when his head got burnt. So you know that Mike did that with the Jackson 5. He did that Pepsi commercial. And so... They, they're they doing the Pepsi commercial, and this pyrotechnic thing goes away and lands on Mike's head and burns his head. And Mike had a, a specific handler, this dude that was friends with the family. Let's say his name is, is, is Steve or whatever. And uh, he's concerned, like, holy shit, Mike got burnt, Mike got burnt. Everybody's freaked out, and there was an audience there and everything for the thing. And... So Mike's burnt, and they're in a studio in Burbank, and uh, he goes running to Mike because they got to take Mike out of the building in a stretcher because now the ambulance have come and everything. So they got to take Mike out of the building, and Mike is on the stretcher saying, Where's Steve? Where's Steve? I need to see Steve. So they get Steve, and they bring Steve over, and Steve's like, Mike, what the fuck? What do you need? You okay? He said, I'm fine. Get me my glove. And he said, what do you need your fucking glove for? You got your head burn off. He's like, they're going to wheel me outside. I'm going to see the fans. I need my glove. So Mike had it in his head. Performer. He needed to carry on that, that shit performer. where it's like, man. Showman. But with that said, I hate to say it. I hate to. Mike molested kids. He fully he fucking did. I don't think he did. He did. Kyle, you're fucking tweaking, dude. Macaulay Culkin said he, said he did it. Yeah, that's a beard. Uh, I know, I know, I know. He totally did it. Emmanuel Lewis, I all that shit. I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it. No, that. and Kyle. Wait, Robson. He, he said, I don't want to oh, believe it. I watched the documentary. It was so great. choreographer great. kid. Did he fucking. Yeah, he totally did it. Let's, let's totally not get graphic. He totally did it. This is a family friendly show. That times. made me thrilled. But, man, like. I don't want to. I don't want to believe Mike did it, but did. Mike did fucked up shit. When the when, and, and I don't think this was planted. When when the cops went and raided Neverland, and they went in and looked for shit. He had a bunch of weird shit like books and magazines of like boys wrestling oh, and shit. God. It's like come on, like you know. But man, I don't want to cancel Mike out of my life. I fucking. Human Nature is one of the greatest songs ever made, and then fucking Nas made uh, 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 It Ain't Hard to Tell off Human Nature. Like, I play that in one of the first, I played those back to back in one of the first FA radios before Finding Neverland came to our <laughs> pure eyes. But yeah, shit. I'm, I'm afraid Mike's, I'm afraid Mike's out, but. I heard that but the but, but the but the the one thing Mike definitely did, which is totally true, and you could link this back to a bunch of stuff. So the National Enquirer, the is that still around? Yeah. So crazy. Mike's PR team, Michael Jackson. They're the ones that sent them the photo of him sleeping in the hyperbaric chamber. Oh my god! Like so, Mike's team sent it to them. And they started making an agreement with the National Enquirer of what stories to run and whatnot. And then Mike would then Mike would go do interviews, 
and say, no, they're lying. They're lying. That wasn't me. I didn't do that. They're ignorant. So he made a deal with the National Enquirer. This is a fucking real deal. He made a deal with them, and then he backtracked and was like, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> Performing. I'm saying. That. I heard him. Um, I heard he had a deep voice. He's just constantly doing a bit. I heard he had a deep voice, like off camera, like Barry White type thing. Nah. Like his real voice isn't like. Isn't like that? Nah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's ignorant. <laughs> That's ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Who's well. The guy living in OJ's back house. Cato Kalin. I like his style. Cato Kalin. That goof. But yeah, fuck. Oh, it's bizarre to be alive. All these things, all these things. All these things. We got really lucky the last episode that none of the songs got erased. That was... That's right. That was very, um... Very good to hear. I hate playing these songs and they get erased. But yeah, let's hit you with some more music. <laughs>
yeah, I don't know if you like that last song. I like it. I think it's good. It's David Crosby. David Crosby with laughing. I don't mind it. It's pretty good. But yeah, huh? Another show. Another show almost in the can. But yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys liked it. Not to sound so insecure. But I think it was funny. Us talking about a bunch of bullshit. Bantering. Hee-haw, yee-haw. Talking this way, talking that way. You guys hearing it? You guys witnessing? Listening? Yeah. Here we are. Here we are in the future. So far in the future. Existing. And then later on, we won't exist. Palpable. Palpable rudimentations of existence. <laughs> this is this is clearly existential scientific meanderings of existence and the future of existence yeah well thank you for listening if you listen and thank you for liking it if you liked it I don't know what I mean by pressing a button I mean like the like inside of your heart that only exists to you cause with this show you don't have to fucking press no buttons. I don't give a shit. Fuck it. Fuck it. You don't like it? Good. Leave a bad comment. Tell me you don't like it. Fuck it. I don't care. I'm not paid to be here. I'm here because I want to be here. And this ain't you know, this ain't me trying to sell you nothing. Once again, this episode is not sponsored by Manscaped. This episode is not sponsored by BetterHealth.com. But I bet I could do pretty good with that BetterHealth.com. I had I I went to therapy once, not once. I went to therapy at. at three times in Los Angeles and this was about eight years ago and um, the therapist cried and I didn't I didn't do I, I did nothing to invoke said crying she cried I was just being open about this and that whatever but yeah she cried but I think I could do with some therapy one day who knows but once again, this is FA Radio. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. And we're here. And we have no idea when you're listening to this. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, buenos tardes, buenas noches. Um, abrigado for listening. And uh, yeah. One more time we did this. Is it worth it? I don't fucking know. Do you like it? I don't fucking know. But, for the people that do like it, rest assured, I'll be back next week at the same time, at the same channel. To you and yours, Good health, good thoughts, the world's crazy. I know that when I do this program, there's so much going on in the world that is so fucking insane and 
filled with sadness. And I get it. And I don't really talk about that stuff. Well, it's because I'd, I'd rather... I'd rather do whatever it is that we did right now than to do that and talk about that. I'd rather spread some sort of optimism and, and, and light feelings than address what's obvious to all of us about what's going on. And uh, I suppose that, that's why I'm, I'm here and we're doing this. So again, thank you. And to you and yours, a good night, a good morning, a good evening, and the whole shebang. Thanks so much, F.A. Radio. Here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes the sun, I say, it's alright It's alright Here comes the sun, little darling Here comes the sun, I say, it's alright See you.